Hey viewers, today I am going to replace a bent bike fork. I got this old denout here, and if you look at this side, this fork here has got a really funky bend, kind of comes come down, back, around, like that, and uh, I shouldn't do that. And on this side, this side is not like parallel with the other fork, so it almost seems like it possibly is bent back up here somewhere. It might be possible to straighten these, but the problem with straightening them is once they're bent and you straighten them, the fork is weakened and then it has potential for breaking. And uh, if you break a fork while you're riding, that is extremely dangerous. So usually the safest bet with a bent fork is just to replace the fork. So that's what I'm going to do today. Okay, now when getting a replacement fork, you need to make sure you get the right size and the right type. And so like on an old bike like this, it's got a threaded fork and so I knew, knew I needed a threaded fork. And now the most common diameter steer tube on a threaded fork is one inch and that's what's in here. And so I also need to make sure that the length of the steer tube is as long or longer than what's in there and it is and I can always cut this down a little bit. I need to make sure that the threaded portion goes down far, you know, into like the head tube there so that I know I have enough space in here to thread on the uh, little uh, lock nuts and stuff up there at the top. So, it's, and also I need to make sure that the inside diameter of a threaded steer tube is the right diameter. Uh, this is 22.2 uh, millimeters in diameter of the stem. That's the most common on a old uh, threaded fork. And that's what's inside here is 22.2 millimeters. And on a French bike, it might be 22 millimeters and an old American made Schwinn, it might be 21.15 millimeter uh, diameter inside there. So you'd have to make sure you get the appropriate fork for that. Also, you need to know, uh, make sure you get the right length of fork this way. And these are old uh, 26 inch wheels, not the same as uh, 26 on a mountain bike, but 26 on an old English bike. And so I got a fork size that, but I want to make sure that the length from the crown here down to the axle is about the same because that would actually affect the geometry. If I got it longer, the front end of the bike would be slightly up. If I got shorter, the front end of the bike would be down. But I also want to make sure that the length from the uh, brake bo uh, bolt hole here down to the axle is about the same. And then that controls like what the uh, braking here is. Make sure the brakes actually hit the rim. Um, and that, you just see that pretty close because you can, uh, to a certain extent, adjust the brake pads up and down. But all that looks about the same. So, and also I want to kind of make sure that, you know, it's, it's the new fork is wide enough to accommodate any of the wheels and everything like that. But all this looks good. And so, so I think I am set to go. Okay, I'm going to start off by removing the front wheel. And I got these axle bolts here so I can loosen these. And on this old kind of uh, wheel here, I have to pull the forks out to release the wheel. It's kind of locked into place there. Next, I want to remove these fender stays here from the uh, fork. So there's a couple of little lock nuts on the back here. I'm going to remove those. and then remove these screws here. Next I'll remove this nut here to uh, remove the brake and the fender. So just remove this. And then the fender should come right off like that. And then I can slide the brake off like this. Now I need to remove the uh, handlebars and stem here from, from the uh, steerer. And if you have a uh, threadless uh, fork and uh, stem and everything like that, then this whole process is going to be quite a bit different. But this is what I'm working on, so this is what it is. So loosen that. The hammer. Tap that down, get the, the wedge loose. And get this out of here.
work this out of here. Okay, well, the stem is not coming out of there very easily, so what I'm going to do is try to get some penetrating oil in there. So I'm going to loosen this lock nut here. And I don't need to remove the cup there. And so that'll kind of expose down the top of the steerer there. And then I'll get some uh, penetrating oil here and just kind of get it down in there around the stem down into the steerer. And then I can also spray some penetrating oil up in through the bottom of the steerer, up through the bottom of the fork here like this. So just spray it up around in there like that. And then I'll let that soak for a little bit. Well, this is just being stubborn as heck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of wood, kind of uh, get it underneath the stem like this, and then use a hammer to strike this up and see if I can strike this thing out of there. And that is working. So that's bringing it out. And got it out of there. Yay. Okay, and then the lock nut came off with the stem. And so now there's a washer here, and then the little cup cone here. Pull that off, and there's a bunch of bearings there. And I'll drop this down out of place. And so I have the old fork off here like this. And then I need to remove the, uh, the little crown raise here from the old fork. And so I'm just gonna use a hammer and a screwdriver, just kind of just tap it and rock it off. So tap a little on this side. Tap a little bit on that side. Tap a little on that side. And there's the crown race off. Just like that. Okay, so here's the old fork and here's the new fork. The steerer on the new fork is obviously way longer than the old fork, so I need to cut it down. So what I want to do is measure the steerer on the old fork, and I want to measure from the base of where the uh, crown raise sits. So I'm going to measure from there up to here, and that looks like five and three quarter inches, or maybe just a hair above five and three quarter inches. And so I'm going to measure right from the base of where the crown sits. Measure up here and then I'm going to mark this and I'm going to use like a felt tip pen and go just a little hair above that like that and measure twice, cut once. So I'm going to measure this again just to be sure. There's five and three quarter inches. I'm going to hold that there and measure that there and yeah, that matches up just like that. So that's right where I want to cut like that. Now to cut the steer, I'm going to use a hacksaw, but I have a neat little tool here from Park Tool that will hold, it clamps down on the steerer and holds it, and it's got like a little slot in here for the hacksaw, so I can cut nice and straight on there. Uh, this is actually for a threadless, but it'll work on this. Uh, so this part down here clamps right into a vise like this. I can stick the steerer tube in, and I got my line there, so I kind of want to line that line with the slot there. And kind of get it roughly where I want it. I can bring the hacksaw tape down in there, and I want it, then I can adjust it a little bit. Bring this back out a little bit. Test it. Nope, in just a hair. You try to want to cut it as accurately as possible to the original, and that looks about right. So I'm going to clamp this down, and then work on cutting this steerer here. And so there, nice clean cut. And then I want to clean up the cut with a file, just lightly go along there and clean up any burrs along there, just kind of smooth it out. 
Now I need to install the uh, crown race onto the new fork. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a, like a little bit of grease down around the, this, where the uh, crown race sits. Just make it a little easier for it to slide on there. Like that. Smear it around. Like that. And then I have my new crown race. Well, actually it's the old crown race. But I'm going to slide that on there like that. And then I have my crown race setter, my homemade one. And there'll be a link in the description for the video on uh, how to make one of these. And set that there like this. And then with a wood mallet. And there the crown race is fully seated onto the new fork. Now I need to reinstall the bearings. So this is the bottom race here. I have the bike turned upside down. So I'm going to take some uh, grease here and fill the race here with grease. And this will help hold the bearings in place when I turn the bike back uh, right side up. Like this. And then I measured the bearings and they're 5 32nd inch bearings. And so I have a whole bunch of them, brand new ones right here. So I'm just going to begin filling the race with the new bearings. I should have like a pretty much a continuous circle. If anything, maybe leave one bearing out. But it looked like there was pretty much a continuous circle around there, so that's what I'm going to go for. There, that looks pretty good. Now the bike is right side up in the uh, stand, so now I'm going to put the bearings in the top race. So, just fill this up with grease. And then start placing bearings one by one. And all done with that. Now I'm ready to install the fork into the head tube, but before I do that, I want to put like just a little bit of grease, just a thin coating of grease around on all this here, Let me get on the threads here, and that'll help it uh, keep it from uh, rusting and getting all seized in there later on. Now I can put this up through here carefully. I don't want to knock out any of the bearings. And I can test this down there with the bearings on the bottom. And then I have the top cup here. And I'm going to thread this on. And this is pretty large uh, uh, diameter here. So I'm going to use a very large adjustable wrench to kind of get this to turn here. My smaller crescent wrenches just don't open up wide enough. And it's just a little tight threading onto the new steerer. Probably with the chrome there, maybe just slightly larger. Okay, that turns nice and smoothly. And I don't want to tighten this down too much onto the bearings. I want to make sure that there's not play in there, but I don't want to have it like binding either. So it's somewhere between there. Okay, now I'm going to replace this little washer that came off of there. And then I have the lock nut. And I'm going to thread the lock nut on there like this. And test the uh, fork. Make sure it turns nice and smoothly. And then... I'll tighten the lock nut on. And again, make sure that this turns nice and smoothly. And check for play. Seems to be okay. And tighten this on just a little bit more. And okay, everything seems to be nice and smoothly. And I can always adjust this uh, a little bit later. Okay, I'm ready to reinstall these handlebars. 
I reinstalled the uh, bolt and wedge in here, and it was pretty tight to get in the first place, so uh, or get out. So I'm gonna, I think it's gonna probably be tight getting in. So I'm gonna use some grease and grease this up really well, and I'm gonna get a bunch of grease down inside the steerer there. This also help keep it from uh, seizing in there in the future. And so now I'm gonna slide this in. And I'm expecting it to still be pretty tight. So I'll work it in. Yeah, it's still pretty tight in there. Um, I use Okay, and get that roughly straight. And then uh, tentatively tighten this wedge bolt there, like that. Okay, now I'm ready to reinstall the brake in the front fender. So I have the brake here, and it's got the bolt there, and I'm slide that through the hole there. And then the fender is going to slide up through here, through the brake, and the little bracket back here is going to go onto the bolt. And then there was a washer and a lock nut that went onto the back here. So, thread that on there and kind of get that roughly positioned there. I'm not going to tighten down quite yet. Not fully anyway. Like that. Okay, now I need to reattach the uh, fender stays to the fork. The original uh, screws that came out of the original fork are threaded differently than these, so I have to use some uh, different uh, screws. And so I got these uh, metric M5 screws, and so they seem to fit. So I'll put these in here. I don't have any little nuts to fit on there, so I'll have to put those on there later. Now, I ran into an issue with the new forks. These are being new forks. The hub spacing is a more standard, about 100 millimeters. The problem is that the old wheel is, well, it's an old wheel, so, and the hub spacing on that is about 88 millimeters. But, fortunately, these are steel forks, so what I can do is I can actually uh, bend them in slightly to, to around the eight, 88 millimeters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my fancy little tool here that I've used to actually push like uh, chain stays out to accommodate a larger wheel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to push this in to accommodate the narrower wheel. And so what I'm doing is just uh, repeat it repetitively, squeeze this in, let it out, measure it push it in more, let it out, measure it, and do this over and over until I get this around, you know, maybe 90, 89 millimeters wide so that the wheel will fit in nicely. Okay, after repetitively squeezing them in and letting them out, remeasuring uh, over and over, I finally got them down to about 88 millimeters wide, which is where I want them to be. I had to squeeze them down to less than 70 millimeters wide and let them out before they finally stayed about where I wanted them to be. Okay, now I'm ready to try fitting the wheel. Let's uh, see the astronauts here. Slide this on and get this all fitted up in here like this. Tighten down the axle nuts. And now with the, the, the bike down on the, the floor here, I can, uh, so I know the, the wheel is fully seated up into the uh, dropouts there. I'll go ahead and tighten this. Now with the wheel fully in place, I can center the uh, brakes there, and I need to 
tighten the nut on the back of the brakes, locking that in place. And I can still fine tune the uh, centering of the brakes a little bit here and there. Okay, and then I want to remember to uh, straighten the handlebars and tighten the uh, little stem bolt here and get that nice and tight in there so that the handlebars won't turn. And so that's nice and solid there. Okay, there it is, all done. The new forks are installed. I probably still have like a little bit of minor tuning to do with the brakes. I probably want to overhaul the front wheel hub, um, double check the shifting, everything like that. But it's done. Uh, the forks are installed. I think they look great. Uh, I think the chrome goes well with the rest of the bike. Anyway, I hope you found this useful or interesting. If you did, please click like on my video. I always appreciate getting likes on my videos. It helps me out. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click the big subscribe button and you'll see new videos that come out. I'm always coming out with new videos. And I'm also over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like my page, and I post a lot of stuff over there as well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.